Welcome to Choir Talks. Thanks for joining me today to share together some scripture. Today we're going to talk about Psalm 19, which is a great psalm to talk about the creation and the evidence for God that is seen there. Recently, I've been listening to podcasts on various subjects. One that I enjoyed recently talked about the space race, the Apollo program back in the 1960s. I was alive back then, and uh, it was really a big thing to me as a kid uh, to see those rockets take off. And um, I remember famously that the first human in space was a Russian cosmonaut, an atheist. And when he came back, he made a statement in Russian that translated something like, I didn't see God up there. But for those who have eyes to see, we can look toward the heavens, toward the skies, and see God and his hand everywhere. And so the psalm writer in Psalm 19 has that experience. Here's what he says. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, and night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. So God's creation is constantly speaking about God's glory. May not have been evident to the cosmonaut, but for those of us who see with eyes of faith, we see in creation all around us evidence of the Creator. Every day, uh, we're under a constant reminder of God's greatness as we walk through this beautiful world that he has made. He says um, that the heavens are declaring his glory. And then he says, day after day, they pour forth speech. And night after night, they reveal knowledge. It's as though one day takes up where the other day has left off. And there's no end to the continuous telling of God's greatness. Isaiah 40, 22 uh, says this, He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, spreads them out like a tent. Isaiah 40, 26, Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all of this? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them by name. What the heavens are revealing about God is, in verse 1 it says, His glory, His greatness, everything in all of creation is created for God's glory. Even us, um, in the New Testament, uh, in Ephesians, it says that we are created for the praise of his glory. Sometimes we tend to think in our me-centric world that God um, created us and we're here for our own good and our own enjoyment. But the opposite is true. We're really here for his glory. In every culture, in every country, people can see and know that there's a creator. Hear this. They have the, the heavens have no voice, no words, no sound, yet their voice goes out where? To all the earth. Romans bears this out. Paul writes in the first chapter of Romans, Since the creation of the God, world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what was made. These verses point to the greatness of creation and the glory of God that is revealed in creation. These verses show us that uh, the revelation, God's revelation of himself is implicit in creation. In verse 7, there's a shift, a a changing of verse. um, He goes a different direction in his text here, and now he's going to talk about the explicit revelation of God. It's not only implied in creation, but it is directly spoken to us through God's Word, through the Bible, uh, and in the New Testament, ultimately through the living Word, which is Jesus. But here, even in the Old Testament, through the the Word of God, or here in verse 7, it says the law of God. And when you read law of God in verse 7, you should think not just the Ten Commandments, but the whole doctrine uh, that the Bible teaches about who God is. So listen to this, this part of the song. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Here, we'll just do this a verse at a time really quick. Um... The law of the Lord is perfect. Um, There's not many things in life that you can use that adjective for, but certainly God's word is one of those. What is is brought to us through God's special revelation is, is perfect. 
It has existed for centuries, and it still applies to us today. It still brings us understanding today. It is perfect, and it has this effect. He says it refreshes the soul. Um, that reminded me of Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me besides quiet waters, and he restores or refreshes my soul. Um, restoring or refreshing is bringing back to the state that God originally intended. That's what God's Word does for us. It brings us back to the state that God intended. Jesus said this in, in the book of John. He said, You are already clean because of the Word that I have spoken to you. God's Word bringing us back to cleanness. In the last half of the verse, it says that God's um, law, His Word, uh, makes wise the simple. Um, that's, that's a great thought for us. We are, are simple in the sense that um, we uh, have to gain understanding as we walk through experiences of life. But it's the Word of God that can bring us wisdom as we walk through those things to, to teach us and help us to understand God's ways in the world and how we are to live, not only to please Him, but to live the life that He intended for us when He created us. Uh, here's the next verse. The precepts of the Lord, or the words of the Lord, the law of the Lord, is right, giving joy to the heart. It's, it's right, it's correct, it's righteous. Uh, and another place in the psalm, it says that the righteous rejoice, uh, that the people rejoice when the righteous rule. Um, there's, there's joy when justice is done, when rightness, when righteousness prevails, there, there's joy. And, and so the law of the Lord brings righteousness to us, and it gives us joy. The commands of the Lord, he says, are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The commands of the Lord um, enlighten us. They open our eyes to see what is true and what is right. When you think about um, the testimony of Paul in the book of Acts, it says that when he made his conversion and he was he was started thinking completely different about who God was after after meeting Jesus on the road to, to Damascus. Um, the Bible said he was blinded for a time, and then at the end of his blindness, it says scales fell from his eyes. As a great metaphor for us to see that the law of the Lord, our, our true revelation of God, enlightens us and brings light to our eyes. Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is pure. It endures forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and they are all righteous. And then he starts talking about the worth of God's word to us. Verse 10, they are more precious, these words of God, than gold, than much pure gold, and sweeter than honey, the honey from the honeycomb. Um, they're more precious, and then he, and he weighs them against the most valuable thing in his day, gold. And he says, this is, this is better. The understanding that we have is beyond material riches. A life lived with wisdom that comes from God's word is better than one lived with wealth, is what he's saying. He says they're sweet like the honeycomb. Um, we, should, we should hunger for God's word. Uh, it is the, the bread of life uh, to us. And then he makes this, um, this great promise to us in verse 11. By these words, or by them, your servant is warned. In keeping them, there's great reward. So as we learn and understand the law of the Lord, uh, we, we are warned. Uh, that's, a, that's a great promise. We are kept out of the path of so many things that we could fall into that would be harmful to us uh, because we are keeping God's word. We have the wisdom that he gives us in this word, and it, it keeps us from so many wayward things that we could get into. And then he says, in keeping them, there is great reward. That's the other half of the promise. We stay away from things that we shouldn't be in, and we, we are rewarded with the reward that just comes from living a godly lifestyle, living in righteousness. There's a, a dividend, if you will, uh, for, for being righteous on a, on a daily basis. It pays us back in a, in a good way as we seek to live right. Uh, and then he says in verse 12, Who can discern their own errors? And then he pleads with God, Forgive my hidden faults. So here's the idea that the Word reveals to us what is going on wrong in our heart. It, it shows us sin in our life, and it gives us the opportunity to, to turn away from that sin. And uh, sometimes it is difficult, as he says, for us to see our own errors. Uh, the, the poem writer said, Oh, to see ourselves as others see us. But as we walk through life, 
Pride often blinds us, and we can't see our own faults and our sins, but when we, when we read them through this word, they are illuminated to us, and, and we are, have to be honest with ourselves about things that we don't want to see in ourselves. And then he, he pleads, forgive, forgive me my hidden faults, and keep your servant also from willful sins that they may not rule over me. All right, these are the not only the sins that I haven't noticed about myself, but these are the ones that I know about, but they're habitual sins that I'm choosing to do over and over. And so his, the other half of his plead is, Lord, keep me away from those habitual sins, those things that would become a prison to me if I, if I continue to do them. Um, and so it's God's Word that informs me about these things, that it's through this Word that the Holy Spirit convicts me about these things. And so he says, if, if you do this, Lord, then I will be blameless and I'll be innocent of great transgression. And then he ends with this great verse. May these words, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That's a, you ought to underline that in your Bible. That's a great verse just to pray to the Lord. That could be a daily prayer that you start or end your prayer time with the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Just a daily prayer that this psalm writer gave us that, that we can ask God to, to show us his ways on a, on a daily basis. Psalm 19, it's a great psalm. Hope that you take some time to, to read it over this week. Have a great week.